in bolted connection i took only the bearing bolts so this hsfg bolts is remaining so let's see how do we find out the shear resistance of high strength friction grip bolts or hsfg bolts so first of all let's remember how the bearing type of bolt transfer this shear force so when we applied this some load on this plates and if this bolt is there so what will happen if it is a bearing type bolt then bearing stresses and shear stresses will develop in this bolt so bearing stresses are developed on this surface and shear stresses are developed on the cross sectional area of the bolt and these are the two things which transfer the shear force between the plates but if you are talking about hsfg bolts then how does it transfer the shear force so when you apply or when you put these type of bolts these are stressed up to their proof stress that is proof stress is equal to in this case proof stress is equal to 0.7 times ultimate stress of the bolt so these are highly stressed or pretensioned bolts so what happens because of this pretensioning the contact force between the plates is very high and because of this contact force when you apply the load on this type of connection then the friction between the plates will come into picture this friction will resist the shear force which is there between the plates and the bearing and shearing that is on these two surfaces of the bolt these do not come into picture but in that also two type of cases are there so if slip can occur in hsfg bolt so if we are saying that slip can occur then it will become a bearing bolt only so then this friction will be there plus this bearing stresses in the bolt will also occur so for that we will have to check for the design what we earlier saw that is we will find out the bearing capacity and the shearing capacity as well shear capacity that depends upon some conditions so let's see in detail how the code has specified so the code first of all it has specified two types of hsfg bolts one is parallel shank type and the other one is wasted shank type so what is the difference in parallel shank the area of this threaded portion or the root area or thread area it is less than the shank area whereas in case of wasted shank this shank area is smaller than the root area so this root area is more in this case so what happens in this case in this case in the case of wasted shank the stress concentration stress concentration is less so that's just the basic intro of these two types what how we need in this design part so if it is a parallel shank type then the code says that it is designed for no slip at serviceability loads whereas it is designed for slip or it can slip at ultimate loads or ultimate stresses so on uh, if we are if in the design of this parallel shank type bolts on the from the serviceability criteria we will find out the shear resistance of the bolt and for ultimate load we will check that if these are safe in bearing also because the bearing can occur in case of ultimate stress so that we will have to check and the other one is wasted shank type so in, in wasted shank type the slip does not occur at all so even if they are stressed up to the ultimate stress the slip will not occur so we are not worried about the bearing strength of these bolts if they, these are wasted shank type and the code has given the sh nominal shear capacity nominal shear capacity of hsfg bolts as 
वी एन एस एफ इज इक्वल टू म्यू एफ एनी के एच एफ नॉट सो म्यू एफ हेयर इज द कोफिशियंट ऑफ फ्रिक्शन एनी इज अ नंबर ऑफ इंट्रैक्टिंग सर्फेसिस सो इफ इट इज अ लैब जॉइंट सो नंबर ऑफ इंट्रैक्टिंग सर्फेसिस दैट आर ऑफरिंग शेयर दैट आर ऑफरिंग फ्रिक्शनल रजिस्टेंस सो इफ इट इज अ लैब जॉइंट दैन ओनली दिस सर्फेस इज ऑफरिंग फ्रिक्शनल रजिस्टेंस वेर एज इफ इट इज अ डबल कवर बर्ड जॉइंट दैन इन दैट केस दिस सर्फेस एज वेल एज दिस सर्फेस दिस टू सर्फेसिस will offer the frictional resistance so for lab joint it is equal to 1 and for double cover but joint it double cover but joint it is equal to 2 in single cover also it will be 1 because then also one only one surface will be there and kh next kh is equal to 1 if the fasteners are provided in clearance holes KH is equal to point eight five if the fasteners are provided in short short slotted holes. So short slotted hole if the size is not appropriate or if it is a long slotted hole, that means slot will be something like this. But we are loading it perpendicular to this slot. So in that case, we will take KH as point eight five and KH is equal to point seven if it is a long slotted hole. But we are loading it parallel to this slot so that is the different values of kh and after that f not f not is a minimum bolt tension at installation so f not is equal to minimum bolt tension and it is given as a and b into small f not small f not is the proof stress so small f not is equal to 0.7 times F U B that is 0.7 into ultimate stress of the bolt and A and B is nothing but the root area that is 0.78 times pi by 4 d square. So putting all these values, we can find out the nominal shear capacity and depending upon whether it is a parallel shank type bolt or it is a wasted shank type bolt, the slip resistance we can calculate as. slip resistance vsf is equal to vnsf divided by gamma mf vnsf is equal to mu f any kh into f not divided by gamma mf and this gamma mf is equal to 1.1 if we are saying that or let's say it is a parallel shank type bolt parallel shank type or it can be given that the slip can occur occur at ultimate load then we have to take this as 1.1 and if the slip does slip is not permitted even at ultimate load then this gamma mf is equal to 1.25 no slip at ultimate load so that is about it now in this case if this slip is we are saying slip can occur at ultimate load in that case bearing should also be checked so for checking the bearing we have to go back to our previous formula we had two formula one was for bearing capacity one was for shear capacity so those formula will be used to check for the bearing and minimum of these two will be your bearing strength for the bolt so that should be greater than the applied load for the safe design so that is about how we find out the slip resistance or the shear resistance now let's see one question to understand it properly so here two plates are connected and m20 bolts are used here so we have to find out what is the design strength design strength or the shear capacity of bolt shear capacity 
of gold because in design strength the strength of plate will also come that I am not going to show because we have already seen so we will just find out the shear capacity of a pole so we have to see two criteria that is slip resistance is designated at service load and the other one is slip resistance is designated at ultimate load so that is for this partial safety factor in this case it would be 1.1 in this case it would be 1.25 and what are the other things given here that we are using HSFG port of grade 8.8 .8 and M20 size and fasteners are in clearance holes clearance holes so this hole size is proper in this case and that means kh is equal to 1 it is not long slotted or short short kind of hole and the third one is coefficient of friction mu f is equal to 0 0.3 so all these things are given to us and we have to find out the shear capacity of the bolts now from our formula what we saw the nominal shear capacity nsf is equal to mu f, mu f n e k h f naught so mu f is given as 0 0.3 and n e because it is a double cover per joint so two surfaces are offering shear resist two surfaces are offering the frictional resistance so n e is equal to uh, n is equal to 2 and kh is equal to 1 because it is a clearance hole for fastener and we have to calculate this f0 so f0 as i said it is equal to a and b into f0 and so we can write here as a and b would be 0.78 times pi by 4 d square d is 20 Volt size is 20 and F0 would be 0.7 times the ultimate stress and because it is a 8.8 .8 grade volt so ultimate stress is 800 MPa so that we can put here into 800 and so F0 from here is equal to 137224.77 and we can put all these values here 0.3 into 2 into 1 into 137 24.77 and from here it is equal to 82.33 kilonewton. now for this first criteria when slip resistance is designated at service load for that we will find out the shear resistance as is equal to vnsf that is equal to 82.33 82.33 divided by partial safety factor that is equal to 1.1 in that in this case and it is equal to 74.85 and this value is come is there for one volt and we we have six poles on this section so on either side we have six poles so we'll multiply it with six for the total shear capacity of the bolts and that is equal to 449 kilonewton now after that this is the first part of this question that is we have calculated the slip resistance at service load because at ultimate load bearing failure can happen so at ultimate load we should check for the bearing strength so for that you will have to find out those shear capacity and the bearing capacity so that part we have already seen in the bearing board so that is not required here in the second case when no slip is allowed at ultimate load this one so the partial safety factor is 1.25 so the design shear resistance is equal to 82.33 divided by this partial safety factor that is 1.25 here and this value is equal to 65.864 and for 6 volts this is for 1 volt for 6 volt it would be 6 times 65.864 which is equal to 395.18 kilonewton so this is the answer for second case